Greening Auto Company is a custom car shop that was established in 1999 by father and son Jeff and Jesse Greening. They produce two to three full builds a year while offering custom machine parts as well. Jimmy Shaw had already utilized their shop located in Nashville, Tennessee for two other projects. One, a beautiful C10 pickup with a step side, and the other, a 67 Nova that was built for autocross. This time he approached them with his 71 Ford Maverick, and he tasked them with building a multi-purpose performance vehicle. What they produced was a monster with the ability to autocross, drag race, road race, and pick up groceries on the way home. The problem with the jack of all trades is they tend to be a master of none. So is this car any good in Gran Turismo? We'll take a closer look and answer that today. The Maverick the shop started with was in great shape so they didn't need to waste a lot of time on rust repair. It was mounted to a Roadster shop chassis with independent suspension keeping the car planted. Powering the car is a twin turbo 427 V8 based on the Windsor block producing a staggering 1200 horsepower. This jumps to over 1400 horsepower in the game after modifications. The vehicle is equipped with bare brakes all the way around to ensure that it can stop just as well as it accelerates. But as stated before, this is a multi-purpose car. It's not a no-frills race car. The car has a carbon fiber dash pad and a kicker sound system with the controls on the center console. It's also equipped with vintage air air conditioning. Most of the controls are placed near the headliner above the driver's seat in a racing inspired configuration. Let's go ahead and take it out on the track over in Tokyo and see how it handles the lap. Although this Maverick is meant to be a multi-purpose race car, it seems to get its biggest influence and in design from pro stock drag racing. This doesn't fit well in the current Gran Turismo 7 environment as there are no real drag strips set up in the game. You can mock some up on your own, but it's not really a major part of the game. And I don't really expect to see this in the future either due to the nature of drag racing being down to fractions of a second in reaction times, which is difficult for online gaming to separate wins and losses. The car accelerates aggressively and has plenty of forward grip. It had a tendency to push before softening up the front suspension, but even afterwards, between the 1400 horsepower motor and super wide rear tires, you do feel like you're wrestling a wild beast. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because it's a lot of fun to drive, but it really won't make it your go-to car for most situations in Gran Turismo. The front end of this car felt very light, but it didn't really feel agile. It was more that the front end was trying to go airborne, and with those wide rear tires, it didn't really want to rotate all that well anyway. We ended up getting about 10% of wear on the front tires and about 25% on the rear. So overall, not too bad, but that's also part of the update for 1.33. The issue this car really suffers with is fuel usage. This is the worst gas powered car I've tested so far, with only the electric cars being more of an issue. This car can get two laps down, but you need to pit every other lap or you're going to run out of gas. You can use it on longer races as long as you change the fuel map. Our lap ended up at 1 minute 54 seconds .347 which puts it right behind the Supra with the stock motor and in front of the Julia in 14th place. I'll have the setup here in just a moment. Feel free to pause and copy it down. And please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content so you don't miss any future videos.